Is the Bible a vibrant and engaging book to you? Or do you struggle to get past the boredom and apathy that so many people are saddled with when it comes to reading it? You know, the good news is that help is at hand. It is possible to hear God speak to you. And as you learn more about him and his ways, your excitement and hunger will grow. We're going to show you how making a simple list about what you see in the text will liven up your Bible study. All it takes is a little time and willingness to learn. So stay tuned to find out more. Hi, I'm Molly. And I am Nigel. From Precept UK. And previously, we've talked about the importance of asking questions of the Bible text and then marking the obvious and easy things like the people, places and events. And if you haven't seen the first two videos, don't forget to go back and watch them as in a minute we are going to use the same text, Exodus 17 verses 1 to 3, and build on what we have done so far. So do click on the links. So what's the value of making a list? A list helps us to observe even more as we continue to develop a firm foundation upon which to correctly interpret and then apply the text to our lives. A list is a compilation of every fact given about a particular word, subject or person, place or event, and the repetition of keywords or subjects can become much easier to see. And as we slow down and make the list, we engage with the text and give ourselves time to learn about God. And we clearly see what he's saying, we hear him speak to us through personal application. Now, there are three types of list that we can make. First is a written list, the second is a verbal list, and the third is a numbered list. So let's make a written list on the congregation of the sons of Israel from Exodus 17 verses 1 to 3. You can do this either in the margin of your observation worksheet or in a notebook and just write sons of Israel as the title. So I'm just going to do that um, at the bottom where we have got some space there, sons of Israel. Okay, now we're going to look at each place that we have marked, the sons of Israel. And uh, we're going to write down, using the words from the text, the facts that we learn about them. So in verse 1, we see that it was all the congregation of the sons of Israel. And so you just literally write verse 1 down and put down all the congregation. And then we see that they journeyed by stages from the wilderness of sin. I'm going to let Nigel do the writing whilst I'm doing the talking. Um, we also see why they did this. If you look carefully, we can see that it was according to the command of the Lord. So you'd want to put that down on your list as well, according to the command of the Lord. And we see where they were. They were at Rephidim and we see what they were doing there. They had camped at Rephidim. So you could simply put camped at Rephidim. And we also learn that they had no water to drink. So what we've been doing is looking at where we've marked previously the sons of Israel and we're asking the, the five W's and H question about what we're learning about them. So verse two tells us, and this is what it says, it says, therefore the people quarreled with Moses. So again, just put down verse two. It's always helpful to put the address where you find the information and just write down, therefore, uh, they quarrelled with Moses. And then we see that they said, give us water that we may drink. So you just simply put down, uh, said that to give us water that we may drink. And still in verse 2, we see that actually Moses now speaks to them and says to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? So the facts that we learn about the people of uh, the sons of Israel are that they quarrel with Moses. That's the first thing. And that they test the Lord. So just put those down under verse two as well. Quarrel with Moses and test the Lord. And so in, in verse three, let's look at the places where we learn something about uh, the, the, the sons of Israel, the people. And we see that the people thirsted for water. So it says they thirsted there for water. And we know that there is at Rephidim. We underlined that before. So they thirsted for water. And then the next thing that we see is that they grumbled against Moses. So make sure you get that down on your list. They grumbled against Moses. 
And then finally, um, it says they, what we learn is that they, they question Moses and they actually ask him this question, you know, why have you brought us up from Egypt to kill us? Uh, and so what we could put on our list is they asked Moses if he had brought them up from Egypt to kill them, the children and livestock from thirst. So as you can see, we're just going to the text, we're looking where we've previously marked, and we're just using words from the text to make a simple list about what we learn about the people. Okay, so having written your list, we then need to go back and read it through carefully and evaluate what we have observed. And if we do that, we would see that the word water is repeated in verses one, in verse two, and verses three, and also the word quarreled or quarrel or grumbled is also repeated too. So making the lists and evaluating the list helps us to see these additional repeated words. So we clearly see that the people were obedient to the Lord because they journeyed according to his command, and yet they found themselves without water to drink. Now, surely they had a point when they raised this with Moses, didn't they? Well, maybe, but it's interesting, isn't it, that Moses said that their quarrelling with him was in fact equated to testing the Lord, and that didn't sound so good after all. So in our next video, we will talk about context, what it is and how it rules all interpretation. The context of this passage will help us to understand what we've just learned about the sons of Israel and we'll then be able to make some application. But I wonder if you are already being challenged about quarrelling and grumbling, something that most of us, I have to say, are prone to do. In this extended video on making lists, we want to go back and explain what we meant by a verbal or numbered list, which are alternative options to a written one. A verbal list would be simply saying out loud what we see about the sons of Israel, rather than writing it down, as we've just done. Most often, this would take place during a group discussion, a Bible group discussion, something like that. But if you're studying by yourself, we really do encourage you to speak out God's word as you're studying it, because this is gonna help your learning too. A numbered list is when we put numbers one, two, three, and so on against the facts that we learn about the sons of Israel. Now, for instance, we would put a number one above the phrase, all the congregation. That's the first thing that we learned about them. And then we put a number two over the phrase, journeyed by stages from the wilderness of sin. And number three over, according to the command of the Lord. And so on. So to summarize, making a list is a key tool that helps us to observe the text carefully because number one, it is a compilation of every fact given about a particular word, a subject, a person, a place or event, and the repetition of keywords or subjects can become much easier to see. And then number two, when listing, we are taking more time to focus on the text, to observe and understand it in a way that allows us to hear God to speak to us personally. And then number three. Listing may raise more questions which you can explore further. For instance, we saw that the people camped at Rephidim. So you may want to look on a map and see where Rephidim actually is. If you would like a more detailed practical study guide to Precepts Inductive Study Method, our recommended resource is Lord Teach Me to Study the Bible in 28 Days and that's available from our website. Now, if this uh, video has helped you out, it would help us out greatly if you could like the video and subscribe if you want to find out more and new engaging ways to study your Bible. Next time, we're going to talk about context, what it is, different types of context, and how it determines the biblical text's meaning, what it means and what it cannot mean. So, until next time, let's seek to know God deeply and live differently. Mm -hmm.